This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hi, I'm Ryder Taff, Portfolio Manager at New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advisory and co-host of Money Talks. Each week, we take your personal finance questions and tell you about a money topic we hope you find helpful. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org or on your smart devices podcasting platform. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHI certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl. Licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks is uh, out this week. so we don't playing get, hooky. We don't get to do our uh, Gilligan, Skipper, and Marianne <laughs> impression. Uh, so. <laughs> well, I got a bone to pick with him anyway, since yeah, okay. he's not here. Well, not yet. Not yet. If you want to join this conversation, you can. Send an email to fixit101mpbonline.org. I've got to change that in the script, because I said, if you want to join this conversation, we hadn't said anything yet. <laughs> so, Well, we'll, I kind of we'll did. I'm already picking on Jeff, because he's not here. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Um, now, now, I heard, uh, by the way, I heard, uh, I wasn't able to, 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 uh, to do the show last week, but I was able to hear it. I heard one of my favorite guests. Uh, showed up, and I, I love just hearing this guy speak. Oh, I know. Is is so? Uh, doesn't he need to do movie trailers? He does. I mean, I'm, he's Seb got Bledsoe such from a Fireplace Chimney Sweep Solutions was guest last great week, voice. and just amazing. Yeah. Java did he did he throw out his phone number uh, a couple times for us? He did. Yeah, said, he did yeah. all of that. You know, just, classic just, said. Just yeah. Classic said. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he's he was a awesome. Very good marketer. Um, anyway, so I'm glad that you guys got to do that. Um, there was another thing, a little housekeeping thing here that I wanted to talk about for Fix It 101 that we need some help with a new little kind of side project we're working on here. Uh If you remember, if you remember a while back, we, uh, we started a project when we had a gentleman on John Wilbanks, um, from Mississippi solar or MS solar LLC. Right. Remember we had them on? Well, we're putting together a podcast. We're going to talk about solar here in Mississippi. And um, we we wanted to talk to uh, some of uh, maybe our listeners who have been down this road. And, and uh, so if you have solar panels or if you use solar energy at your home or business or want to hear, we, we want to hear about your experience. So we want to talk to you about how this works. You know, that would be awesome. I actually know folks. I got, you know, I know some peeps. Well, I'll, you can I'll reach out to my peeps. Okay. Well, you can email us at fixit101 at mpbonline.org. No matter your experience, uh, I'd like to hear either way how that went with, you know, your, your, having solar panels installed how's it working are you are you making money you're losing money or you, you know what's going on i'd love to we'd love to yeah, hear because we're, we're talking to the people the pros um like we talk with john and you know other people in the industry but right. we kind of want to talk with the people the, the, the people the homeowners or maybe the business owners that have them because unlike pam i don't know anybody with solar right it's, it's an emerging thing here in mississippi so we right. want to if you have experience please reach out and um We'll, we'll, we'll talk with you. Yeah, it's well, very exciting, some of the things that are going on with solar here in the state. So I'm Mississippi looking forward has, to that. has long missed out on a lot of opportunities, but we should not miss out on one that just – suck sun out of the atmosphere because that's pretty much what we have in mississippi is we got a lot of sun, sun. and a lot of water right <laughs> <laughs> all right um you said you had a bone to pick with jeff i do today? it's what? all his fault what i dealt with yesterday what did you deal with well i had an epic battle with fruit flies oh man i've been doing that at my house for the past epic. like couple of, yes epic I'm telling you, and the, over uh, Labor Day, some friends of mine told me about the apple cider vinegar dawn detergent thing. And so I had those sit. I felt like a pickle at the end of the day. But there were fruit flies everywhere. And I'm sitting at my desk. It was my day to handle the phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so there are just little things flying all over the place. So I'm trying to take appointments for in, home inspections. And these little flies are all in front of my screen, yep. and then I'm on the phone with uh, an agent, and I sucked one up my nose. Oh, no. And I was like... <coughs> all right, that's it. 
<laughs> and I was like, Jeff told me not to put stuff down my garbage disposal. Right. So the peach appealings uh-huh. <laughs> in the garbage one day too long, probably an hour too long. Wow. And that's so, amazing. Yeah, it was it was I was like. Just not a happy person yesterday. And those, thing, those things are almost impossible to get rid of once they're there. I look. I felt like I was one of those crazy people you see in the movies, you know, where they're reaching into the air and trying to grab things. Oh, no, I, I was done with it this, this past week. You know, of course, we, uh, we called them drain flies this week because that's where they came from, you know, was the drain. But we also knew we had bananas in the house and we're thinking, mm. yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. And do you know that a fruit fly will get in your drain? Really? Yes. Okay, so that's why they call them drain flies? Well, not necessarily. Or why I call them drain yeah, flies. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, bottom line, I don't know what you want to call them, but I call them annoying. I, I mean, well, I tried to get rid of them, but then you figure out that there's 72,000 at one time, and the mm-hmm. only way to do it is to napalm the whole house. So you got to... <laughs> Just kind of move on and learn to live with them, I yeah, guess. Yeah, if you get it that bad. I was researching all these things online about apple cider vinegar and a funnel and, you know, putting fruit in a jar and a funnel. I mean, it was just all of this stuff. And, and I'm here to say that I tried them all. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I was How desperate. I, yeah. I was just desperate because I don't like the idea of doing the chemicals. And I was also doing this. Right. You know, where I was hitting. As a matter of fact, oh. I squashed several on my computer screen. You know, the only really good way is to deal with, with those or mosquitoes or even flies is to buy one of the um, one of the electric fly swatters. It, it kills no more flies, but it makes you feel better you when feel it powerful. zaps. Yes. That's right. That's so, right. Maybe I'm. That's where I'm headed to the hardware yeah, store. Right. To just after make that. you feel better about it, you know, because it's not changing. <laughs> no. So, uh. Uh-uh. Glenn is on the line in Gulfport. Has a comment about solar panels. You with us, Glenn? Yeah. What's going on, man? Oh, nothing much. You said you wanted to know somebody that had solar panels. Oh, and you're that guy. And I've, I've had them for a while. Okay. So what? What? Um, uh, tell me, how's it been going? I, 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 when did you install them? Uh, probably about a year and a half, two years ago. Did you use a company? Don't tell us which one. <laughs> yes, I used the company. Okay, good. Um, sorry. So you, so you used a company to install these solar panels. Um, was it costly for you? Yes, it's costly, but the company I went with, they have a special little deal where, you don't pay that much uh, uh-huh. per month for it. Right. It's just kind of like a mortgage. Um, they're kind of expensive. Right. You get a uh, tax break from the federal government, but you don't get one from the Mississippi state government. Right. Uh, also, about once a month, they send me a check for any of the amount of the uh, electricity that I put back into the grid. And it ranges anywhere from uh, 25 to 45 bucks a month. Hmm. And it cuts my, uh, cuts my electric bill probably to around 120 from 220. Okay, so, so, so you hundred dollars or so. So you did more of a partial kind of thing, and it sounds like, okay, so if your power bill was 500 before, is that what you're saying? No, it was like. Uh, 200. Okay, it was 200 before. Um, uh, how big a home is this? How many square foot? Feet, sorry. Uh, right at 1,400. 1,400, okay, okay. Uh, and about how much How much in solar panels did you get? I got 36 panels, and do you want to know the cost? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. It was around $30,000. Okay. Okay, and then you financed so that. You finance it through the, they've got a special deal that you finance with it. Uh-huh. Also, they, your federal government will give you up to like a $10,000 credit uh-huh. for your panels. So, they end up costing about twenty five, twenty, twenty five thousand. 25000 Okay. Yeah. But I've got 36 of them, so I've got <laughs> quite a few. Right. And, and does yours have a battery backup system? No, I did not buy the battery backup. The battery backup's 10, 11,000. Right. Plus. I wanted to explain to folks, this is uh, this is something that I learned just when um, the solar guy came in here, was that that you can get a system that just works when it's, you know, sunny outside, 
but it's not storing energy. It's just using the energy that's hitting you right now. Right. Um, and I think that's the kind of system you're talking about, Glenn. Yes, that's the same system I've got. The only thing is, if I don't use the electricity, it puts it back into the grid. Uh huh. And then they send me X amount of dollars for the amount that I send back into the grid. I think that's interesting that that your power bill is not zero, but they still send you a check. I don't know why that didn't wash out. In Mississippi, uh, the something about the comp- power companies won't let you do a hundred percent. Oh, I got gotcha. you. If you're on the grid, they have a thirty percent that they're going to keep. They're going to do gotcha. No what? And that's the catch. See, <laughs> there's the stuff we want to know that's right there. It. Right <laughs> that's the there. good stuff. Glenn, I uh, appreciate it. Thank you for your call. Um, that's a, that's kind of a big deal for us because we've. This is something that we really want to talk about. We know that's coming. I do know that a new law passed recently, uh, and the new uh, federal law passed, and maybe juicing up what you get for those panels in uh, federal tax dollars. So I think that may have just changed. Uh, I don't. I don't know the exacts on that, but we are trying to get this uh, solar thing done. So maybe we'll we'll have you an answer of the way to do solar in Mississippi real soon. You know, and that would be good for us to kind of look at what the Mississippi legislature is thinking along the lines of that. Too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because and one of the things that Glenn said is that the state isn't giving you any consideration for these panels. Right. And, and, and we don't know if that's, uh, you know, he had his... Uh, system installed before we don't know if any rules changed on july 1 or if that's there's when they any do. pending right legislation legislation like yeah. yeah it sure would be nice to know and yeah. i don't know if the solar folks here in the state have any lobbyists or folks who are working with them on that but the consumer i, I mean for some of the like i remember years ago <laughs> my house i updated everything my house was built in 58 right. and i decided and i'm thinking I can't give you the exact date. I'm going to say 12 to 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I went with a newer, more efficient air conditioning system Uh and a tankless water heater. And I received some tax rebates as a result of doing that. Yeah, I know that um, I don't know if the tankless rebate is still there, but I know that it was at one time. Right. Moving the tankless. Yeah. So. You're listening to Fix It 101 on NPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pivas, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl. You can join the conversation this morning. Send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Hang on, Jeremy. We're going to get to you in just a second. I've got a uh, an email here that came in that, that I thought really needed to be answered. You ready, Pam? I am ready. Is it okay to use flexible hose to exhaust a bathroom fan? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, second part, uh, being in the hot, uh, being the hot weather we experience, do bathroom fans need to be exhausted through the roof? No. No. <laughs> okay. Good. So, tell tell us about that, Pam. Why? Well, <clears throat> you can actually use dryer vent, and it, you can use like a corrugated, flexible vent to put on your bathroom vent fans. And I'll tell you, it just amazes me sometimes how how many times I'll go up in the attic, and the vent fan is covered with insulation, and there is no extension right. on it. That's a typical thing that we put in our reports. What you want to do is you want to vent that at least 12 inches above the insulation mm-hmm. so you can use that flexible vent. Right. Uh, a lot of times you can pull it up above the insulation and just strap it onto a um, bracing uh-huh. up in the attic. Sometimes they're rigid enough that they'll just stand there. Right. And, and you'll know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so the thing here, and we've talked about this on the show before. <laughs> And Jeff and I, this is one of the few things he and I agree on. <laughs> right. Um, Venting it out the roof gives the roof another hole. It's another way. hole, mm-hmm. and it's the physics of our environment. Mm-hmm. So here in Mississippi, the thing we do not like is moisture in our air. Right. Okay? So if you take that vent fan and you run a metal corrugated vent Mm -hmm. for 25 feet in your attic, Mm -hmm. it's not venting anything. If you're trying to get it out the roof Uh in that long, long vent, what's going to happen is you're going to take a hot shower and create all this moisture in your bathroom. Right. Then you're going to try to suck it up through 
a tiny little vent fan. Right, which is not very powerful. Not very, not not yeah. a lot CFM, and I really don't. Right. I don't ask me what that means. I don't know. I just hear that. So it, it you're trying to push that through 25 feet in a warm, moist environment. Right. So physically, what's going to happen? is it's going to condensate on the inside of that vent and come dripping back down through the fan and rust it out in no time. Yikes. So if you have a rain shower in your bathroom from your vent fan, that's probably what's going on. Now, you don't want that vent to be... Um, I've seen this. Matter of fact, I called it out in an inspection the other day. Mm -hmm. You do not want that vent fan to be pushed toward the soffit toward a soffit vent right because what it will do is it's too low right there Mm -hmm. and the moisture will begin to get from your bathroom that you're venting through that vent will begin to gather on the osb decking of the roof and you will rot it out yikes okay so you want to take it to above the insulation now there are some jurisdictions around here i won't name them good who are wanting you to take it out through the roof, and all they're doing is creating some problems because they're going by, and this is, this is Jeff and I talk about this all the time, you can live by the letter of the code, mm-hmm. but if you don't understand the environment and the climate in which you're right. building, you're going to cause problems. Because let's say anything, I tell folks, anything north of Memphis, from mm-hmm. Memphis north, you better vent it out. Right. Because their climate is cooler so if you start venting into your attic in that climate, you got uh, a mold farm. Interesting. Okay. And that's the reason the code, which is written in New York, mm-hmm. in Chicago, that's the reason they want them to vent out. Right. But to do that here in our southern climate is just a bad idea. Okay. P.S. CFM oh. stands for. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Cubic feet per minute. Okay. So that's the amount of air How that it can... How much air it's pushing per minute. That it can push out, right. yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Jeremy. He's on the line in Mobile. What's going on, Jeremy? Hey, guys. Um, uh, I, we just moved down here, me and the wife, uh, mm-hmm. from Athens, Georgia. Oh, cool. Um, and, uh, you know, go dogs, whatever. But I was going to say it, but I didn't, I didn't <laughs> want to be that guy. Uh, hey, they only are number one in the nation right now. Right. Hey, you silver uh, here we go, though. Um, so about solar panels. So uh, about 10 years ago, um, my home church um, in, in Athens, mm-hmm. we built a brand new um, uh, sanctuary. Uh-huh. Uh, and we tiled the entire roof with solar panels. So, uh, hang on. Let me, let me ask. Solar tiles or solar panels like tiles? So, so, uh, no, well, it has a it has a full roof on it, <clears throat> and then uh, solar panels. Okay, okay. So, so, so we get the the east and west. Uh, nice. So full sun every day. Okay. Um, we have the battery backup, uh, and I don't know if it's an issue with uh, Georgia Power, Mobile Power, or Mississippi Power, but it's all part of the same Southern company. They don't. Uh, they don't charge us like whatever we put back into the grid. Uh-huh. We get we get it full on back, and it could be because it's a um, a nonprofit, or it could right. be different things in the uh, the system. Of, but they're all they're all part of the, the same southern company. Right. So that could be that could be something that could be brought up at a, a board meeting or shareholders meeting or something. But I think anybody that's going to uh, put in the 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 scratch on the table right to install that stuff on their house they should be compensated you know equally and not have to pay back you know or or 30 percent and then also have to pay a power bill if you if you're living in the middle of a big old field right and you're basically off the grid because you paid you know one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for solar panels right you you know that should be something that you get to keep um, and not pay back. And I so, hear you. And, I hear so you. I, 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 I don't know exactly how that works, um, but, I, and like I said, my speculation is because it's a nonprofit. Right. They're not going to, they're not going to hurt, they're not going to hit a church for 30% of what we're putting back on the grid. Right. But we, we put a lot back. And well, uh, the last, uh, the last year I was there, uh, our power bill for, you know, the, the entire complex um, was like 
negligible. Okay. So, so they were pleased. Cool, that was my question, Jeremy. So, uh, so th- and because, and that's what I was talking about with Jason in the break is that there are some commercial applications, which we'll just call this because you've got an enormous building with a lot of space. Right. And so the overall experience was positive for the church. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, it, 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 it was a lot of cost up front, um, which, you know, came from the parishioners and stuff. Right. Um, but it, it, it washed out in the end after two years and it paid for itself. Oh, wow. Wow. Two years. <laughs> That's nothing. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you calling and, uh, and contributing to the conversation. This has been pretty cool to talk about that. Yeah. And, and can I say one last thing? Yeah, um, man. So I've, I've only, we've only been here for like three months, mm-hmm. and I've been fishing around on the radio trying to find some, uh, some, good, some good public broadcasting. Um, yes, Because I miss, I miss my w, WUGA uh-huh. a whole bunch. Um, this is one of the finest radio stations in the land. Y'all are doing a great job. Thank and you. Congratulations on your 40 years, and, and just please keep it going. This is so, this is, uh, it feels like home. All right. Y'all are, y'all are doing a great job, man. Thanks a lot, man. We Thanks, appreciate Jeremy. it. Thanks, Jeremy. Now I've got to deal with a big head over right. here. He can't. <laughs> yeah, like that was new. <laughs> Jeff Sammons from Houseworks is uh, basking, I guess, in Bali today. Is that what he would be doing? I have no idea. He didn't. He didn't check in with me before he called oh, in absent. Okay. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's running a barbecue grill somewhere. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm sure. And I want to go straight to Jerry in Bay Springs. Has been on the line, Jerry. Uh, what what's going on this morning, man? Oh, uh, nothing much. I want to tell y'all about a do it yourself project. Get yourself a solar water heater. Oh, cool. All right, um, so go ahead. Go for it. All right, years ago, before the tornado, I built one, and what you do is you you get an old water heater and strip the insulation off of it, paint it black, and hook it up to your uh, hot water line going to your regular hot water heater, whether it's gas or electric. Right. And uh, you got it painted black. You put it inside uh, an insulated enclosure. What I used with my first one was an old refrigerator, so... All of that oh. cost me about uh, maybe a hundred dollars in parts, maybe not that much. Right. And uh, what it did was it gave me uh, ninety to one hundred and five degree water going into my water heater instead of fifty five degrees or fifty. Whatever's coming and out of the ground. ground. All right. Uh, so the 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 couple of years that I had it before the tornado, uh, I had a gas water heater. And it saved me a tank of propane every year. Wow. Not that much. That's and really cool. Easy to do. It's easy to do. You put a glass cover over that insulated box. You got the tank painted black. Put your uh, pressure release valve on there just like a regular water heater. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it saves you money. And it gives you plenty of hot water. It's almost like adding a loop. That, you're right, right. To yeah. preheat. Yeah. To preheat, now, yeah. I, I've got a book that's got pictures of these things on the rooftops in San Francisco in 1896. Oh, wow. So, and and when I was in Puerto Rico, I saw them all over the roofs down there, just a box with a black tank in it, uh, preheating the water, or if it's sunshine most of the time, heating it for you all you need. Right. Man, that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, I've never heard of idea. that. That's awesome. I have I have heard of another system. I saw a system where someone had built a solar water heater out of, believe it or not, they were aluminum cans that they had painted black and uh, glued them all to a wall. And huh. and they kind of fed through each other. Well, these cans yeah. got just blistering hot during the day. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. And it heated yeah. up that water. <laughs> great. You can Google bread box solar heater and find all kinds of ways to do it. Okay. Red box. Bread box. Bread box. Is that right? Yeah. Bread box? That's right. Bread box. Bread box solar heater. Okay, okay. cool. Good we'll deal. Do it. Solar, there's, there's no moving parts. You know, it's, it's going to be there forever until the tank starts leaking or whatever. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Got another email here. So, so. Hi, we love the show and have learned so much. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> mm, I'm sure what you learned. Yeah, we get we talk about a lot of things. Right. What do we need to do to prevent or at least greatly reduce 
mildew and grout. Um, so, so they have, uh, they put a picture, this is Vonda and Tupelo. They put a picture and they've used new subway tile with a white subway tile with, um, it looks like white grout and they did a spectacular job. I looked at it. It just, it looks great. And they were just asking, Hey, this beautiful white surface I'm about to do in this shower and you know, it's about to happen is, is the moldies and the, you know, dark lines and the grout and everything else. So, uh, Vonda's asking, is there a good way to protect this? There's a couple of things. Okay. And I'm the first thing I'm going to talk to Vonda about is uh, that vent fan. <laughs> oh, in the oh, in the, oh, yes. the vent fan in the bathroom. And the vent fan in the bathroom. What I see a lot of folks that they think that vent fan is for smelly. Right. And it's just not. What we're trying to do is dry that room out. Uh-huh. And if you're not drying that room out, uh-huh. then you're going to have the mildew. You've got to get the air dry. So one of the things that I do, I have a white subway tile bathroom that I had put in. Mm-hmm. It is gorgeous. Yeah. It's got the subway tile with the, uh, the white with a little black mm-hmm. in there. And then I use glass block. Uh-huh. As I don't have a shower curtain, it's a walk in, so right. you can just walk straight into this thing. Right. I've had that for over 10 years and never had mildew because I run that vent fan when I'm taking a shower uh-huh. and I let it run for about 15 minutes after I'm out of the bathroom. To vent, to, to basically get the moisture out of to the room. To get the moisture out of the room. So that's the biggest thing that I see folks not doing is they're not letting that room dry out enough after they finish using it for, mainly it's for a shower because you know you're what? putting a lot of water in the air. But I think you just changed a lot of people's lives. And I don't <laughs> think you know this. But no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, let me get it straight. Um, but, but, but saying... This fan is to take the moisture out of your room. Yes. Changes a lot of people's perspective of what that fan's supposed to be mm-hmm. doing. I mm-hmm. think a lot of people believe that fan was for what you said originally well, we thought it was. In, in construction from about 10 or 15 years ago, the craziest thing is I would go into these bathrooms and the vent fan would be in the toilet closet. Well, that's not going to get a lot of moisture out of the air for the shower right. if it's in the toilet closet. So I think that is really a misconception is we're trying to dry the air out, which is doubly difficult here in our southern climate because we've already got a lot of water. In the right. Air. And then we turn on a hot shower. <laughs> and then you turn on a hot shower and now you're just creating all these water droplets. So that's the first thing that you need to do. The second thing is that um, go to your hardware store and talk to them about some type of a grout sealer. They say, I have seen manufacturer specifications, that you should use that sealer at least once a year. I don't do that. I think right. I've sealed mine once in over 10 years. Now, is this the sealer that you use? Was this like a, a spray? It was a it was a sponge wipe on type thing, and oh, I was okay. supposed to seal the grout. Uh-huh. And I have um, the floor of my shower is gray and white mm. little hexagons okay. with white grout. And so when I tell you that I was worried about mildew, I was, and then I realized all I have to do is dry it out. Right. It's just make sure that it's dry. Um, so that's you another know- thing that you can do. Another thing that I thought of, and we talked about this with air conditioning. You said you were talking about your air conditioning, how it runs regularly all the mm-hmm. time. Yes. How? I guess I, I, I have a fear that I'm going to burn out a fan if I keep it on too long. So In your air just, conditioner? No, no, no. In the bathroom fan. Can I just turn that on and leave it on for a long time? You could. You could. And I've even seen people come in and put a a ceiling fan, not a vent fan. But, Uh you know, in older bathrooms, sometimes if you're on a on a first floor and you've got a second floor above it, you Uh can't really put uh, a vent fan in. But I have seen them been put in there before and then they're venting right into the floor cavity, which is that's going to be a problem. But you can just come in. It just you want to think, how can I dry this air? So putting a ceiling fan in mm-hmm. is a great idea. Now I understand that you may not want that ceiling fan on when you get out of the shower because it's gonna make it chilly. Uh, that's true. It's I gonna did. make it cold. Yeah. But as soon as you get finished and you walk out of that bathroom, pop that thing on and let it dry the air out for you. Man, that is. I mean, 
life altering. Thank you, Pam. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the phone. Moon's on the line. Moon is on the line in Liberty. All of those words are cool. What's going on, Moon? So, first of all, I'm a frequent listener, and thanks to Miss Pam, I have sealed all my air conditioning vents. Thank you. All right. So, awesome. With, with, regard, with regard to solar, uh-huh. I'm a retired engineer from a utility not to be named, and I've been involved with this several years. Yes, sir. And I want just a couple of technical details. Okay. Each utility has its own net meter rate, and it's important that the, the consumer understand their utility's policy. A utility in central Mississippi, they pay seven cents. I live on a co-op in South Mississippi, right. they pay two cents. You got to make sure you understand the difference and how that works for the utility where you live. The other thing that you can do, the Department of Energy has a website and there's a tool on there called PV Watts, Papa Victor Watts. You can go to PV Watts, you can plug in your address, the size of your panel and the net meter rate in your area, and it'll tell you the economic value of your system over the course of a year. So you can kind of figure out ahead of time, well, if I put in a 5KW panel, how much money am I going to get back? And when I've used that with the customers and I've kind of empirically checked it, it's actually pretty good. Okay, so hang on. Say that. You know, the customer thinks, well, I'm going to make a boatload of money, and I would sit them down and say, okay, here's what you're going to get. And they're like, wow, that's not a lot. Again, I love solar. I think it's right. great, but understand the economic value of what you're doing when you're going into it. Okay. The other thing is that some utilities will net you out month to month, so they'll just correct your bill. Right. I live on a co-op. They force you to sign a contract with their transmission provider, and they send you a separate check every three months or so whenever, whenever you've accumulated a certain amount of money for what you get back. Interesting. So you're right. So it would be utility, based on the power company locally. Yeah, so it, yeah. Again, and so right now I'm at the whim of the transmission provider. They might say, well, we're going to change the rates from $0.02 cents to $0.01. Cents. I'm stuck. I can't change that. On the other hand, every mega, every kilowatt that you offset that you would have otherwise bought because you're making power, then that's certainly worth your retail rate. Right, right. So, so, so Exactly. So, uh, you know, $100 worth of power is $100 worth of power. That's right. If I didn't buy it, I saved $100. Right. But I didn't get a check for $100. Right. So tell us again where we go on the Department of Energy website. It's been a while since I've been there, but if you go to the DOE's website and look for this tool called PV Watts, Papa Victor Watts, P V W A T T S, mm-hmm. you've got to poke around and find it, and it's real simple. You plug in your address, and, and again, if you're in Arizona, you get a lot more sun than you do in Mississippi, right? Right. right. So it, it corrects for where you live how much sun energy you're going to get. Man, that's awesome. Thank you for letting us know about that. Man. Yeah, that great information. Cool. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, man. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Uh, that is definitely factors that need to be taken into whatever you're thinking about doing with solar. Uh, let's keep going. Let's say, um, uh, sorry, Regina's on the line and Jackson has an issue with, uh, you got an issue with your roof? Uh, yeah, I, the roof is in good shape. But uh, I noticed recently that there is some moss or something going on the north side of the little area there that faces north. Yes, ma'am. And I, and I went down the street and noticed that uh, other roofs on the north side have maybe a dark spot or something. And uh, Yes, ma'am. What, what, what should be done with this? And also, putting your um, air conditioner, the condenser thing, on the north side. I'm not in favor of that either. What What is it with the north side and how to get the moss off the roof? Well, the north side is the side of the home here where we live in the world. The north side of your home is the one that's not getting any sun. Yeah. They're very little. Yeah. And so, so <clears throat> Regina, what I want you to do with your roof and that moss is I want you to find something else to look at. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so Felder to me. <laughs> Yeah, because the the pro, it's a cosmetic issue. Uh, roofs are going to have mildew and moss and mm. growth and staining on the north side because they're not getting a lot of sun to dry them out. It's just like your grout. You know what? I'm going to give her something though. We got to give her something. Well, what you ready? I'm, Go ahead. Well, you can you could spend a lot of money and time trying to clean these things off, but what you're going to end up doing is damaging the asphalt on the shingles. 
And so I have the same issue on my roof, um, and I just find something else to think about because— Well, can you hit the stuff with wet it and forget it? You could, but I'm just not a big fan of putting anything chemical— you know what I'm talking about? On my about? roof. I mean, it's just because then you have to deal with the runoff and where is it going. Right. And Regina, you know what I'm talking about? The wet it and forget it or the, you know, the house wash kind of stuff. Yeah, but I'm going to, you know, hey, I'm certainly not going to get up there. And if she says it's OK, I just just look at it and think it's um, OK. You just think, oh, that's just been okay. living in Mississippi on right. the north side. I mean, it just happens. And well, for these- I'll tell you, every year I go out and get a thing of the house wash, and I have a sprayer, mm-hmm. a sprayer, and I spray the house, and then I hose it off in five minutes, and it's gone. But you have to do it twice a year because it's Mississippi. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If it's so. a, if you're into neat and clean and pretty, and you know, you can do it. It's like me yesterday. So. I live on a, uh, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I'm going to go ahead and chase this rabbit. So I live on a road that doesn't have curbs. And I noticed the other day that the grass was kind of growing up on the street. So I had this brilliant idea that I was going to go out there and trim that off. Uh After about 10 minutes, I was tired. Right. I mean, that was hard. <laughs> so I've decided, Regina, I need to look at something else. Right. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that grass growing across the road because it's like the moss on the north side of the of the roof. Now, as far as the condenser goes, you know, placement of condensers is, is just such an interesting science, in my opinion. Science. It is. I mean. Science, really? Yeah. I mean, because not you're. Not voodoo. Not, yeah. It's, anyway, it can get kind of wicked. The biggest thing I see is that people will put them in front of their dryer vent. And I'm like, well, that's a bad that's idea. Dumb. That's yeah. just dumb. But it, I see it quite a bit. Right. Well, yeah, you try not to, th- and and if you look on your if you look on your home and you notice that the dryer vent is close to your air conditioning, one of the things one might do is a lot of times those vents have um, a diverter. A diverter, yeah. In other words, hey, air, go this way. Mm-hmm. So turn that away from your air conditioning because the issue is if you're just throwing lint into the fins of your air conditioning, it's and warm, moist air. Right, it's living on borrowed time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and then depending on the quality of your condenser, that to me is the bigger deal. The, and, and I'm kind of a a person who will research the quality of a product and see how long it's going to last. Right. Because you can go and get a real cheap model, but now you're going to have to replace it every few years. Right. Um, and the average life expectancy on a condenser is anywhere between seven and ten years. You know, right past the warranty period. Right. It's, it's, yeah, the day right after the warranty ends. Right. It's so. whenever it's going to go out. I put in a train in 2007, and it is running like a charm. But I keep it very clean. Right. And it just runs well. Now, as far as on the north, let's go back to what she was asking. The north side? The north side. I think that's actually a good idea, but it might not always be practical. Right. And we did talk on this show before that shading of your condenser makes no financial difference. It really, I mean, it may work a little bit better, but I don't know that it's going to have an extreme. um, And then Jeff and I have talked about sprinkling your system or putting mist around your system. Uh There are all kinds of things. And once again, let's go back to the quality. Because if you have a low-end condenser and you're spraying water on it all the time, you're going to get rust, and it's just going to deteriorate even faster. Right. Right. All right. Let's uh, let's keep going to the phones. Uh, Steve here is in Olive Branch. What's up, Steve? I just wanted to make a comment on the uh, bathroom uh, exhaust fans. Yes, sir. Go for if, it. If, if you uh, put a timer switch on it and they're real cheap and they're easy to install, then you just set the timer for 15 minutes and forget about it. You don't have to remember to go back and turn it off. Man, it's- Excellent idea. Steve, that's a home run. <laughs> you know, I remember one of those timers in my grandmother's bathroom when I was growing up. She had mm-hmm. one connected to that. And it spins. And it spins, yeah. Uh-huh. It, was, it, it, it looked like an egg timer, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's what I use. That's a great idea. I may do that. Yeah. I think I may do that, and we'll do a video. And, on. It's, just a, and it's just the switching of a, of a, of a switch. The switch is not going to cost more than... You know, 10 bucks, something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's an awesome idea. Thanks, Steve. Great idea, Steve. Appreciate it. 
You're All welcome. Right. All right. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPV Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl. Jeff Sammons from Houseworks is out this week, but we'll make fun of him anyway. anyway. And if you missed any of today's program, you can always listen back by podcast using any podcast app or our MPB Public Media app. You can join the conversation this morning. Send an email to fixit101 at MPB online.org. Okay, we we started the uh, the day today talking about needing some folks to give us a holler. If you've uh, dealt with uh, solar, make sure to send us an email, fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We're putting together a solar podcast just for you to find out all the info so you can know everything you need to know about getting solar in Mississippi. So just hit us up, fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Okay, email. You ready? I'm ready. All right. I am in the early planning stage of a kitchen renovation. I currently have a peninsula that houses the sink and dishwasher, right? I'd like to remove the peninsula and replace it with an island. Okay. That's pretty common these days. People yes. do that a lot. Right? Uh-huh. What is involved in running plumbing and electricity to a freestanding island? And here's the kicker. Foundation is concrete slab. Right, row. Right. So so this is absolutely doable, uh, but we're we're starting to get into more money now um, if you've got to drill into the foundation. That's right. Well, the first thing I want you to do if you're married is go ahead and sign up for marriage counseling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because renovations are by the time it's over, folks, you want to pay the contractor to just leave. I mean, because it, it it is stressful, right? And and I will say, if you're doing that, don't don't just think of one way to get there. There are other ways to get there. Pam, I've been in your home before, and in your kitchen, in the very center is is a a pole or a, a beam that goes up the center, right? And and I thought, boy, you could run all the power and everything everything you needed from right there. You could run everything from that one pole that one post and yeah. and there is a lot running through there <laughs> right yeah i'll go ahead and tell you so but in other words it doesn't have to necessarily be through concrete on the bottom you might be able to come from the top if you're thinking you could you, know? you could come in with a post and come and make it mm-hmm. a decorative type post right or you could and if it's got to be load bearing mm-hmm. if you're pulling out and that's what we did is we pulled out a wall and so we had to have that post there mm-hmm. and then we just framed it out and put some electrical in it Um, As far as going through a slab, it can be done. Mm -hmm. Um, What you're going to have to do is dig down, you know, bust out some concrete and run those through there Mm -hmm. to that island. But, I mean, it can be done. It's just money. Well, and this was done at my home um, years ago when we had an insurance claim with I flooded the whole house. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. No problem. I tried to burn mine down. All right. Well, so, but anyway, and we had it redone and it's, it's absolutely doable. And I watched them with the jackhammer on the, on the, it freak you out, but you know, it's uh, done and it's messy. So keeping, it's messy. So you want to hang up some, if you can put some Mm -hmm. tarps up to try to minimize that dust and dirt that's going to go. You know, because it's it's going to be a mess. Oh, and one of those things, if you're ever doing any work on your foundation, don't call somebody. Um, this is this is not something where go rent a jackhammer from the local store and go into your foundation. No, I want a there professional. There's steel bars in there. There's all kinds yeah, of there's stuff. There's steel bars. There's plumbing. I was talking to a guy one time, and of course, this was a commercial application, and they mm-hmm. were working on. They were over at uh, the children's hospital, mm-hmm. and they were cutting through some concrete to get to something, and they uh-huh. hit one of those um, uh, tension lines. Uh-huh. And he said, thank God nobody was straddling it because it would have killed them. Yes. Because it, it popped up and broke that concrete all the way to the outside wall. Wow. Amazing. Well, there we go, Pam. We did it. Fix It 101 is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show is produced by Mr. Java Chapman. Our call screener today was Charles Arnold, the intern. For Pam Pibus and absent Jeff Sammons, of course, I'm Jason Klein. And join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public